Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Todd Banner. Uh, I just recently read an article on one of the photo sites about uh, a young photographer who accepted a, a photo gig, a day photo gig, was offered for the day, including editing, $300. So this photographer accepted that. And it was a major publication that, that was hiring. And after that, uh, this photographer realized, at some point realized that was a raw deal, and went online, went on to social media, and, you know, uh, kind of bad-mouthed the, uh, the publisher. If, if you're going to accept a job and you're offered a certain amount of money and you take that money, that's on you. You took that money, you know, you do the job. But it just points out that photographers, many photographers, are just not all that good at business. Um, you know, we, we photographers are, you know, they're creators, they're artists. Um, they don't really get a lot of business training unless they actually put their minds to doing that. Um, I have a friend from actually where we used to live. She is director of a local nonprofit. Happened to run into her while I was actually covering an event. Um, and her daughter is going into professional photography, is getting a degree at one of the local colleges here that actually specializes kind of on the creative side and the arts. But she's also taking a business minor. So she's learning the business ends of the end of things as well. So that's really great. I mean, that's fantastic. Um, most of my business knowledge comes from being in business for a long time as a sales rep. But I'm going to tell you that what the main thing that photographers need to learn to say is no. No. No is a powerful word. So is yes, but no is a powerful word. And you have to understand when to say no. And the best way to do this is if you're going into photography or really any business, anything you're going to do professionally, you have to have things set up ahead of time. So you have to come up with Let's say a day rate, although I think that, you know, quoting by the job is probably the way to do things. But let's just say you come up with a day rate and you say, you know, my day rate's going to be $1,500, you know, to photograph and I'll include editing. That can be the rate that you advertise. In other words, the rate you tell people. It's questionable whether you want to have that on your website or whatever. There's some say yes, some say no. I'm not talking about that here. But that's what you tell people. But you also have a, another rate that's somewhat lower, and that's the minimum that you're going to take. Okay. It's always good to build in a buffer so that you have some wiggle room when somebody says, oh, that's beyond our budget, can you, you, know, can you do it for less? So you come up with what you're willing to take, um, and that's not, what you, that's not what you tell people. So let's just say your day rate is 1,500, but you'll take 1,000. You know, um, and so if somebody calls and or contacts you and says, "We've got this job and it's going to be a day. Uh, what do you charge?" My recommendation is that you don't give them a verbal quote. You have you have appropriate business software like QuickBooks, which lets you do an an estimate, or there are plenty of others. So you do a written estimate and you say, "I will send you a written estimate." And you send that off to them. Let's just say it's fifteen hundred dollars, and then they, you know, either right away or a day later, call you back and say, "It's you know beyond our budget. Do um, you think you could do it for thirteen hundred? Now, of course you'll do it for thirteen hundred. You've already established what your minimum is, but you don't immediately say yes. Oh, of course I'll do that. No, you don't do that. Why don't you do that? Because if you do that, that customer is going to immediately know that they left money on the table. They're pretty sure you'd do it for even less if they'd asked. That's why when you're interviewing for a job, you never say what kind of salary you're looking for. 
uh, I know somebody who was in a job interview and, you know, they didn't ask him that and he had a figure in mind that he was going to ask and they offered him more. So essentially what you do is when they come back to you and say, well, would you do it for 1300 You go, oh, geez, I don't know. I'll tell you what, let me, let me talk it over with my associate, my partner, my spouse, my business advisor, something, you know, it doesn't matter. Just say, yeah, let me, let me, let me, yeah. Let me talk it over with my partner. Can I get back to you on it tomorrow? Yeah. And they'll say, oh, yeah, sure. Or if they're in a hurry, they'll say, well, could you do it today? And they say, well, let me, let me see if I can track that person down and, and talk to them. And so you, you hang up or you don't risk, you know, end the email. You know, and then um, in an appropriate amount of time, whether it's that day or the next day, you come back and say, yeah, we've talked it over, and yeah, we can, we can do that. You know? So now you've established, you know, that you'll take this, and that customer is not thinking, oh, I, I, I should have I should have offered less than that because I'm pretty sure they would have taken that. Um, but those are the things that you have to set up and you have to hold to those things. You have to hold to them. And if somebody comes along and says, you know, we have a day job and blah, 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 and it's $300. No. What? No? Yeah, no. Nobody goes into any kind of retail store, especially some sort of high-end retail store that has, you know, you're talking about fancy, you know, purses or bags or anything like that and looks at an item, the sales associate says, you know, asks, how much for this? The sales associate says, $1,500. I'll give you 300 for it. You get kicked out of the store. So those are my thoughts on this type of thing. It's the kind of thing that you can avoid. You know, the temptation when you're just starting out is to get anything you can. It's going to hurt you in the long run if you accept jobs for less than or way less than you should be charging. Not only that, you're hurting your associates, your photographers, your colleagues, you're, 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 you're hurting everybody. You know, when I was selling laboratory instrumentation, and it sounds like a tangent, but it's not, you know, I found myself negotiating on price a lot. A lot. And we always said, my companies and I, we don't want to get in a pissing match over price. And so again, give you an example. I was selling an imaging system. The lowest that I wanted to go, not that I couldn't have gone lower, the lowest that I wanted to go on this thing, because it was pretty fancy, was $26,000. Now, we had a big, big competitor. It was a much larger company than us. Than us. They came in at $23,000. Okay. But their system wasn't as good as ours. There were several reasons why we had a better system. And so the professor, principal investigator of the lab said, hey, here's a, they're offering this for 2300 Can you match that? And I said, no. He's like, what? I said, no. Their system won't do this, 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 and this. It's going to miss these sorts of things. Your research is important. If you use their system, there are certain things you're not going to see. We bought our system for $26,000. So anyway, I'll end this here. Uh, but those are my thoughts on this matter. If this was helpful to you or interesting, please hit that like button. Um, any comments or questions, pop them down below. I try to get back to people as soon as I can. I'm Todd Banner, and I will see you next time.